Hello gamers. I love horror games. A good spook never hurt nobody and it's extra fun being in charge of the spooks. Watching a character open a door in a movie just ain't the same as watching a character open a door in a game, for some reason. But here's the big question. Who's really opening that door? Obviously it's me, the player, but I'm piloting a specific character through the narrative, one with predetermined goals and ideals. Now, in horror movies, it's kind of a staple for everyone to be stupid. That's how you ensure that people get killed. In a horror game, though, being stupid is an art. The ways that you find yourself in trouble vary a lot from game to game, and more realistically, from protagonist to protagonist. So that's what I'm doing here. I've written like eight video essays since my last one, made zero of them, and so today, as a little treat, I've decided to rank some of the most popular horror protagonists by how stupid they are. I have no solid metric and pretty much no qualifications, which are the best circumstances for a video essay. I'll be starting with the smartest, or least stupid if you prefer, and going down from that. Isaac is anything but stupid. He's like Space Gordon Freeman. He's not really equipped or prepared to face the crazy circumstances he's facing, but by God, he does it. Isaac's an engineer, which in my experience means you're kinda smart, you know, numbers and stuff, but also, he illustrates actual rationality in most of his decisions. In your first encounter with the enemies of Dead Space, Isaac does the most rational thing after watching a member of his team go down, he fucking hightails it out of there. So that's a point for general self-preservation, which for some reason is so hard to find in these protagonists. A lot of the shit you do in Dead Space is super technical, at least narratively. Most of the time you're running around fixing random parts of the ship you're on, routing power, opening doors, etc, etc. It's Resident Evil in space with less nebulous shadow puzzles and more putting batteries into battery slots. But here's another thing. In Resident Evil, you can shoot the zombies just about anywhere. Head is best, but some solid body shots will put a walker down. Isaac, though, he can't catch a break. The enemies in dead space require actual dismemberment to be killed, something which Isaac actually is able to accomplish a lot. That takes technical prowess, a steady hand, a knowledge of xenobiology. Isaac's a smart cookie. That's why he's at the top. Not all sci-fi survival horrors are created equal. The xenomorph in Alien Isolation can't be shot or dismembered or any of that fancy jazz, so Amanda's gotta duck and dodge her way around the thing while getting her job done, a job technically similar to what Isaac is forced to do in Dead Space. Amanda has some kind of job in mechanics. When we first see her, she's welding something, which I can't do. She's also comfortable with deep space travel and clearly inherited a lot of her mom's quick thinking. It's not hard to see why she's smart. She's stealthy, roguish, using different pieces of equipment and technology to track threats and move around them. She knows what fights she's capable of winning and which are worth avoiding. Jill Valentine is a cop? That's just worth mentioning right off the bat. But as far as cops go, she's pretty competent. She shoots zombies, not minorities, which is great, but you know, she's a classic Resident Evil protagonist. Most of what she does is just looking around a place and finding a way out of it or into it. Investigatively, almost every Resident Evil protagonist is pretty good. If you peel back all the horror, Resident Evil games are pretty much all mysteries, and Jill has solved a few of them. She has basic survival skills, and when shit pops off, like a zombie appears out of nowhere, or a dog appears out of nowhere, or a giant mutated beast who's not Mr. X, but yes he is, appears out of nowhere, she has the general good sense to shoot when necessary, or to run. Apparently in Resident Evil 5 though, a game I did not play, she gets brainwashed and turned evil, which personally doesn't feel very smart to me. I would simply not get brainwashed. Hey, other horror protagonists, if you rank lower than Clementine on this list, you're doing something wrong, because Clementine is a child. Now, she's a smart child. She recognizes the behavior of adults and makes educated decisions on who to trust and who not to. She's capable of using technology like radios effectively and had enough common sense to hide in a high and dry spot when the outbreak started. But let me reiterate, Clementine is an actual child and a somewhat young one at that. She's prone to outbursts and discomforts like hunger, thirst, or fear, which can turn her into a bit of an obstacle as any child's needs can become in a high intensity situation. But a third time, she's a child managing to survive in a zombie apocalypse even after she loses her guardian figure, which is what pushes her into becoming a sort of guardian herself. All right, we're, we're starting to get into the fun ones for me. Hey man, for a journalist, your observational skills are pretty dog shit. When Miles walks into the asylum, almost immediately it becomes clear that shit has gone sideways. There's blood everywhere, stuff is broken, you encounter several dead and dying bodies, and still Miles is like, hmm, what could be going on here? Dog, if you literally turned around and show the police the footage of the impaled man screaming at you, they'd probably shut down the building for a little while, probably. But no, Miles decides the best option is to get way deeper into the place, where clearly patients are killing people, and lo and behold he gets tossed over the railing into the shit. Miles, your job is investigation. Why are you so incompetent? Leon Kennedy is also a cop. 
still worth mentioning. In Resident Evil 2, when Leon encounters his first zombie, he does a shoot to it, classic cop, and finds out the fun way how zombies work. That's all fine, there's a learning curve, but here's the kicker. After finding out that zombies are a thing, Leon decides, you know what's the smartest thing for me to do right now? Make my way to a super populated city and lock myself in a police station that's already filled with zombies. And he does that! Why would he do that? Super cop to the rescue, I guess, but if you did that as a normal person, you would for sure die. It's dumb Resident Evil luck that Leon's able to find a rocket launcher and ammo and like four different guns, but in reality, you would for sure die. This is who your taxes are paying. This is Leon. Leon! <laughs> Alright, here's a spoiler. Daniel gave himself amnesia on purpose. Apparently it was so he'd be able to finish his task, but that feels like it would be easier if you knew what the fuck your task was. Connor, you may say, he left notes for himself, he was smart about it. First of all, don't talk to me. This is a video, I can't hear you. Second of all, then why did he scatter them all around his castle? God knows that in real cases of amnesia or memory loss, the best treatment is to wander around aimlessly, piecing together your life from sparsely laid out clues. No, dude, you put a stack of papers on your desk and read them. Also, he gave himself amnesia because he's a piece of shit who's getting manipulated by an evil force. It's very easy not to be manipulated by evil forces, in my opinion. I have been influenced to perform ritualistic murder zero times, and I don't even have a college degree. Alright, this one's actually a spoiler. The remake is coming out soon, so maybe skip past this one if you want to go in blind. Anyway, James comes to Silent Hill because his wife invited him there. Here's the spoiler. His wife is dead. He knows that for sure. Like, that's not a question for him. He was super there when it happened, to put it mildly. So James, Mr. Sunderland, why did you go to Silent Hill? I know that's the whole point of the game pretty much, but let's not lose sight of the logic of it all. James gets a note from his definitely dead wife that's like, Meet me in the scariest town you've ever been to. I'm definitely your wife, don't worry about it. And his logical response is not, Oh man, I'm getting scammed. Or, Oh man, go surreal and fuck that. It's, Oh man, my wife is back. Gotta pick her up from Scaryville, I guess. That seems normal. She didn't die there, but hey, it makes sense that that's where she is, alive somehow, and I'm gonna go. Okay, dude. Sure. <laughs> Here's another how-did-you-not-figure-this-out situation, but kinda in reverse. In Evil Within 2, we find out that Seabass's daughter straight up roasted in a house fire, but also, no she didn't. She got stolen by Facebook and put in the metaverse, I guess, but Seabass doesn't know that. He fully thinks she's dead. So here's my question. Why? Did you ever see a body? When the house burnt down, did you just assume she'd been completely reduced to ash? When the funeral happened, did they just give you an urn and say, yeah, she's in there, and you were fine with that? Now look. Dad of the Year goes after his daughter when he finds out she's still alive, but Dad of the Year also really took her death at face value. Admittedly, sometimes when someone dies unexpectedly or in a particularly grisly way, you just don't see their body again. It actually is destroyed, or it's too messed up to reasonably show the public, or they die in an inaccessible location, or any number of things. But that's your daughter, man. You didn't want to be one scundo on that? You didn't want to see her body? I don't know. Mark Zuckerberg is a motherfucker. He winkle vossed you out of a daughter. That's rough. Ethan Winters! Ethan Winters! Ethan Winters! Okay, I, I love Ethan, but he is a fucking moron. He's got that James Sunderland motivation, that Leon Kennedy self-preservation, and zero critical thinking skills. He drives to Louisiana to find his, drumroll please, assumed dead wife after she specifically says don't. Did he get that message? Unclear. Here's verbatim the message he did receive. Dolby, Louisiana, Baker Farm, come get me. And dude, he actually goes there. What? How in the world did those six words make you drive to Louisiana? That moldy got him acting strange. And when he does find her, she's obviously evil, a little bit at least, and they tussle. They roughhouse a little bit, and Ethan kinda kills her like three times, and each time, he fully believes he did it. Also, spoiler, Ethan technically, going by the lore of Resident Evil 8, dies before accomplishing a single thing in Resident Evil 7. When you get knocked out before meeting the family, according to Evelyn, you actually just get murdered for real. You play through the two games as a sort of mold clone without knowing. Coolish twist, I guess, but that puts Ethan's KD in the literal negative. Not great for a Resident Evil protagonist. Also, in RE8, Ethan, or the clone who believes he's Ethan, is just the moronest moron to ever more on anything. He doesn't know his wife is also a clone, kinda. He reacts so strangely to the things that happen to him and also, in the final scene of Resident Evil 8, they're trying to blow up a thing. Ethan's probably already gonna die, it looks like, again, but he sacrifices himself to set off the explosion and let Chris Redfield and the rest of his family escape. Pretty noble, but... Dude, that's a remote detonator! You didn't need to be there to blow it up! Why did you do that? Anyway, 
Ethan Winters is the winner of Stupidest Horror Boy 2023. Thanks for watching.